Well, greetings. Uh, today we're looking at the last half of Matthew uh, 27. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Matt looked at the portion where Jesus stood before Pilate, and Pilate, uh, at the demand of the people, released to them Barabbas and kept Jesus to be crucified. And uh, where Pastor Matt ended up was where Jesus is on the cross with the sign above him, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. In the rest of the chapter, uh, there's three things that I would just like to take a few moments to point out. Number one is the crowd who uh, was saying to him, he saved others, but he cannot save, save himself. If he is the King of, the, of Israel, let him come down from the cross and will believe him. Well, when I read that, you know, sometimes when you've got the power to do something and somebody's mocking you, to hold back and not respond. But I am so grateful uh, because Jesus could have come down from that cross. Uh, but he, if he would have come down from the cross, you and I would not have been saved. And it was by staying on that cross that we are saved. Uh, that's where the perfect sacrifice was given. So I thank God that today, and you know, sometimes maybe you and I are mocked and things are told about us, but instead of fighting our battles, we need to leave it in the hands of the Lord. And then uh, on over where it says that while he was on the cross, this picks up in about verse 45, uh, now about the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabakathna. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, I can't imagine that there's any of us that have not faced some time in our life that we have felt like God has forsaken us. Uh, but then hopefully we've realized that indeed God hasn't forsaken us. Jesus always referred to God as Father. And when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was asking because God had forsaken him. God the Father forsook his Son so that you and I do not have to be forsaken. At that moment, something happened in judicial power where the Almighty God took your sins and my sins and the sins of the world and laid them upon His Son. And the Bible doesn't just say He paid for our sins. The Bible said He became sin. And in that moment, for the first time, the fellowship, the union between God the Father and God the Son was broken. Between God the Holy Spirit and God the Son was broken. And therefore, when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because it was a very real thing. As I hear those words, I say thank you. Lord Jesus, that you are willing to be forsaken, that I can be with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit throughout all eternity. And then last one, one last thing. As it says in verse 50, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he yielded up his spirit. And what happened when Jesus cried? Behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth quaked. Uh, for the children of Israel, the Jewish people, life had evolved around the temple, or the tabernacle, and then the temple, which represented the very presence of God. And the most sacred place was the Holy of Holies, which was the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant. And there was this special made uh, curtain between the two. And only one person could go into that place one time, once a year. 
anybody else, it would be sin going into the presence of holiness and, sh and, sh and shut down. It showed that the way into the presence of God had not yet been made. But as Christ died, and that veil was ripped from top to bottom, because God ripped it, as it was ripped, it was God saying to me and you, the way into my presence has now been made through the perfect sacrifice of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, as you go along, try to be mindful of the fact that Jesus stayed on that cross because he chose to save us and not himself. Think about the fact that the father went through the pain of his son screaming, why have you rejected me? In order that you and I do not have to be rejected. And lastly, that now the way has been made for us to go directly into the very presence of the father through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think upon these things today. God bless you.